today we've got a video update on the O2 Bug Eye SDI. Depending on where you are in the world, you may call this the O3. But for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about the variable valve timing on this particular model. It was Subaru's first introduction to it. Later model cars have got both inlet and exhaust variable cam control. On this particular model, a 2 litre STI engine had variable cams on the inlet side only. Now, this was a problem that occurred in the O2 Bug Eye and the later model O3 and some of the O4 models before Subaru fixed the fault. But what I want to show you, and you can see initially in this data log for the still picture, is how the variable cams turn off and on um, erratically in normal driving conditions. Now, you may be driving this model and you're thinking the car's just not going as good as what it should. Um, when actual fact it's actually got a fault. Now this is a fault that is not easily diagnosed around the world. Particularly here in Australia, we diagnosed the fault many, many years ago and have slowly been fixing customers' cars ever since. And what I want to draw your attention to is exactly what to look for and how to try and diagnose it for yourself and also then at the end of the day, help you understand more about fixing it. So first and foremost, just want to show you the engine bay. Obviously on the SDI two liter engine, um, fairly similar right up to the current model and of the you know, top man in a cooler. This particular engine was a forged piston engine with uh, two litre, very, very tough engine. You can run some really big boost in this particular model if you want to take a little bit of a risk and get some really good power upgrades. Very affordable car now these days. If you can put up with the way it looks, you might like it or hate it, but I'm not going to go into a discussion about that now. But what I want to show you, and as I just get my camera, it's a bit hard to see. On this side of the engine, on the inlet side, around here, you've got um, I'll start showing a still photo, the variable cam control uh, on the, um, which is actuated by a solenoid through the engine oil pressure and of course on the other side, driver's side if you're in Australia, similar setup under there as well. Now what happens as you can see in this data log is normally the variable cam control turns on when you're driving the car and it will then advance and retard the timing depending on the driving conditions. What happens in the car when it's got a fault, as you can see in this data log where it shows the fault, is it turns on and then it gets erratic and then it turns off and it stays off for a long period of time. Now the way you can detect that yourself is you may think it's getting a gulp of hot air, maybe it's a bad batch of fuel, maybe um, something else is just environmental conditions that's causing your SDI not to go as good as what it should. It's only the SDI models, not the WRX. Um, that this occurred and of course the end result is your car's just not going as good as what it should. In extreme situations if you've got a really tough car with modifications you've got a VVT fault it can actually cause internal engine problems with really really high combustion temperatures and can cause the engine prematurely to fail so that is an extreme situation but more often than not it's just an environmental problem that you may think is causing the fault when it actually what it is is a particular problem with your car. So my advice, no matter where you are in the world, take it take to your MRC team. partner workshop, get it data logged, get it looked at, and obviously then we can rectify it for you. It's a pretty straightforward process to fix. Unfortunately, I'm not going to tell you over the video now how to fix it because there are some other people out there who would dearly love to know how to diagnose this problem and how to fix it, but this is one of the technical secrets that we do keep to within the MRT partner network. But the number one thing is if you're driving an SDI 01, 02, 03 and later models 04, certainly worthwhile having a look at and trying to diagnose and getting it fixed for you. Obviously for more information about your Subaru you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. But most of all have a look at our new website, over 100,000 parts now live on our online e-catalogue. Click the green button and do a search on your particular model or put in a keyword search for a brand name, a part number or a type of part and you'll be absolutely amazed with the amount of information you can get off our website these days. And of course, no matter where you are in the world, I'm certainly look forward to helping you more with your Subaru Mazda and Mitsubishi. But for today, I'm Brent Middleton. Thanks for watching.